Oh, so let's start with kitchens. It's one of my favorite things to talk about because I absolutely am obsessed with kitchens. I love them. So first, let's talk about what we call the work triangle. The work triangle is the measurement from the center of the sink to the center of the refrigerator and back to the center of the range slash stove, just like it is shown in the picture on your bottom left. This should measure about 12 to 16 feet in length and it helps evaluate kitchen efficiency. You wanna be able to have a clear work triangle that is uninterrupted by items or people so that you can work effectively inside the space of your kitchen. Let's go over the basic kitchen shapes. Most of them are pretty easy because they're named after exactly what they look like. You have your corridor slash galley, your L shape, your one wall, your U shape, your island, and your peninsula slash G shape. Okay, so you have um, six different kitchen shapes that we're gonna be talking about. And um, each of them are pretty easy to be able to identify, mainly because, like I said, they're named exactly how they look. So first one, um, I would ask this to you in class, on based on your per basic understanding of shapes, what kitchen shape do you think is the most efficient? So think about it, five seconds, have an answer in your head, and then I'll tell you when we get there. Okay, first we have our corridor slash galley. Basically what this looks like is it's the way that I remember it is if you are gonna go through an alleyway, you're going to have buildings on both sides of you and it's kind of like a little hallway that you walk through. Also, that was what corridor means is corridor is a hallway. So it's like you have two things on each side of you with an empty walking space in between. That is what a corridor slash galley looks like. Galley rhymes with alley. Um, corridor is like a hallway, but that's what it is. You have um, your kitchen has a long skinny strip in the center of where you walk and where you work and then you have both items placed on the side so you'll see an example on the right hand side sorry the left hand side is your um, like basic floor plan and then the left hand side is a picture sorry the right hand side is a picture and I'll show you a few different pictures of these types of kitchens here you have some more corridors. They can be really small or they can be more spacious. However, they are a more popular kitchen in very small, tight spaces like apartments. Here's an example of an all green one if that's your, if that's what you fancy. Okay, there are some advantages of a corridor slash galley. They can use space efficiently. However, that in any traffic, meaning people who walk through it, entering the room will cross the work triangle. So if you ever are like preparing a meal in there with somebody else, you're gonna run into each other a lot. It's kind of like your, um, if you guys have ever taken foods in school, it's kind of like how those kitchens are set up. You always hit each other and you rub into each other because of you're right by each other in these corridor slash galley shaped kitchens. Okay. Then um, let's identify the work triangle. What I would have done at this point is I would have had someone come up and you would have drawn the work triangle on the board. Since we can't do that, here is the floor plan. You would label it, so I want you to look at it for a second. Find your three, th find your three items, which is, remember, your stove, your refrigerator, and your sink. Those are your three things, and then each part, point of a triangle lines up with it, like that. So that is your work triangle. It measures your kitchen efficiency. Okay, then we have our L-shaped, another one of my favorites. I really like L-shaped. Um, this is an example of some L-shapes. You can see the floor plan on your left side and then an example, a picture on your right side, and I'll show you some more pictures. Here's a very modern, very sleek, clean edges type look if you're into that. Here's a little bit more modern mixed with traditional. Um, some advantages, it does allow traffic flow into the kitchen without entering the work triangle and the work areas on the two adjoining walls use a square footage efficiently. It does offer less countertop workspace than other kitchen designs, just so you are aware. Okay, work triangle, find your three items, your stove, your sink, your refrigerator. Remember that each point of a triangle meets up with one of those items. So it looks something like this. Okay. Then we have our one wall, which is our most economical and the least expensive because all of your items go along one wall. Here, your basic floor plan is going to be on your right side and then a picture is on your left side. Here's an example of a one wall kitchen. Here's another example of a one wall kitchen. I do like this one a lot. 
advantages is that it does use space efficiently and it can be easily added into other rooms meaning like as an example say you are um, building a home or you have a home and you want to convert the basement into like a basement apartment and rent it out and you need to add a kitchen in you could easily add a kitchen a one wall kitchen in because it doesn't need that much space um, disadvantages is there is limited counter space because you have like think about it you've got your sink your refrigerator your stove your dishwasher, your microwave, like everything is all along one wall, meaning your counter space is limited. Okay, work triangle. This one is a little bit more challenging just because it's uh, one wall, so the triangle is crazy skinny, but you find your sink, your refrigerator, and your stove, and your work triangle looks something like that. Okay, then we have our U-shape. This is the most efficient, so if you thought about that one, when I was asking earlier, congratulations, you got it right. Um, this is the most efficient because you take the least amount of steps within the work triangle. You see your floor plan on your left side and an example on your right side. Here's another example of a U-shaped kitchen. Very efficient, lots of counter space. Here's another example of a U-shaped kitchen. Very efficient, lots of counter space. Okay, it does use the space the most efficiently and it allow, allows traffic into the kitchen without entering the work triangle. And depending on the door location, traffic may enter the work triangle and interfere with task completion. But like I said, that just depends on where the door is. So it doesn't necessarily even have to be a disadvantage. Let's identify the work triangle. Okay, here's your kitchen. Find your refrigerator, your sink, and your stove and each point of your triangle meets up with one of those items. So it looks something like this. Okay, then we have our island. This is a very popular choice. It's very, very pretty. It's very, um, I, I like this kitchen shape a lot. However, it is a more expensive kitchen, just so you are aware. Basically, it's whatever shape your kitchen is and then you throw an island into it and it's now an island. So like say as an example, if you look at the floor plan on the left side, if you take away that island, it's an L shape. Okay, when you add the island in, it's no longer an L shape, it's an island shape. So it's not like an L shape with an island, it is an island now, if that makes sense. Okay, if there's an island in the kitchen, it is now considered an island shape. You'll see an example on the um, right side, it is very common to paint your island a different color as like a pop. So like you can tell that all their cabinets are white, but their island is blue. That is a very popular choice right now. Okay, here we have a different kind of island. This one is a raised bar island. I don't like these ones very much because it takes away your counter space. Um, because if you look, they've got their sink over on their lower, actually I can't tell. Because they have a sink over on the wall, but they've got something else. But anyways, your whole lower part is now cut in half so you can have the raised bar. So for me personally, I don't like the raised bar islands because I feel like it takes away the point of an island, which is to have um, a ton of space to work on. That's just my personal opinion. Also, I really hate the mismatch lights, but again, my own personal opinion. Here is my kind of island. You still have a spot to place bar stools, so you have a, um, a place to eat and to work, but look at that giant countertop that you have to work on. Like you could make some bomb cinnamon rolls right there on that countertop, no issues. And then it even has place for storage, like underneath for like recipe books. Not that anyone really uses those anymore, but, and like dishes and things like that. Like this is my dream island right there. It's not my dream kitchen, but it's my dream island. Okay, and there just, it, is a, it does allow ample countertop area for activities that do not enter the work triangle. It does require more square footage though. You need a big kitchen to be able to fit an island in there. And it is more expensive because you think about, you need a whole other, um, it's a whole other cost to build the island out of the wood or whatever you're building it out of. And then if you have like granite countertops or marble countertops, that's a big old slab of granite or marble or whatever countertop material you're using that you need to use to cover it now. And so it is more expensive. Okay, let's identify the work triangle. Now for an island, um, it is common for your work triangle to cross over the island just because it's kind of impossible to draw a straight triangle otherwise. So it's okay if your work triangle crosses over a little bit, but you find your stove, your sink, and your refrigerator. Also, you can tell in this floor plan, in an island, it is common to put things in your island like your stove or your sink and your dishwasher or whatever. Um, for me personally, if I'm gonna do an island, I like my island to be completely bare, but that's, like I said, that's my own personal design choice. I don't think you've done anything wrong if you put your stove there or you put your sink there, it's whatever. But there is 
your work triangle. Okay, and then we have Peninsula. I rec I really, really like this kitchen shape. I always have liked them. Um, I just, I think it's, uh, I, I, my eye is drawn to it. I find it very visually pleasing. But uh, Peninsula or um, G-shaped, sorry, kitchen, is it looks like it is like the letter G, okay? It's like a U-shape with an extra piece. Here's an example of one being used. That extra piece can usually be used as a bar where you can put stools up to it or it can be used, like I grew up in a kitchen, my house that I grew up in, my kitchen was a peninsula shaped and it was nice because my mom would always like be cooking and that kind of stuff or doing things in the kitchen and I could sit at the little bar area and I could do my homework or I could draw in color or I could do, or I could just sit and talk to her and that kind of stuff while she was had like plenty of space to prepare so i like the g shape for that personal reason but like i said the island would work that well as to, that would work that way as well here's another uh, peninsula or g shape okay so advantages is it does add a countertop to use an extra either extra workspace or an eating space with chairs or stools and then uh, disadvantages is it may hinder movement into and out of the kitchen work area, but uh, it depends. My kitchen was super small growing up, and it was a G shape, and I remember that I would use that extra countertop for homework, for eating, for all sorts of things. Let's identify the work triangle. Okay, so you find your sink, your stove, and your refrigerator. Remember, each point of your triangle goes to each spot. So it looks something like this.